would basically run out of land to grow more cows. But the demand for beef is continuing to rise every year as the wealth of China, India, etc. grows. There's going to need to be better alternative protein sources. And if the price point of insects can be brought down to compete with soy protein, it's going to have the opportunity to find its way into just about everything. Right now, sort of out of the blue in the last couple of years, it seems, there's been a big movement of attention towards this idea that maybe we should all start eating insects. They're very nutritious, uh, similar protein content to chicken um, by weight. They're very high in minerals, uh, particularly minerals that are important uh, for childhood development. So you've got calcium, you've got vitamin A, things like that. You've got a very small space requirement, so you can grow a large amount of insect protein in a very small physical space as opposed to traditional livestock where a single cow, which might give you about 500 pounds of beef at the end, takes an acre or two of land. The water usage is another really big one as everyone is starting to become aware. Water resources are kind of drying up or they're shifting around and this is a big problem for a lot of traditional agriculture and particularly livestock, which has huge water uses both for the animals and for raising the feed that feeds the animals. And so, you know, there are estimates that half of the grain grown in the world goes to feed animals. And that's a huge amount of water and feed. And that kind of leads into the bat blast really big kicker for the insects is the feed conversion ratio. So if you take 10 kilograms of feed, you get about one kilogram of beef about two kilograms, three kilograms of pork, and maybe five kilograms of chicken. But you can get as much as nine kilograms of insects, depending on your species. One of the things that people are really looking into to make this easier uh, for the Western palate to handle is grinding them up and then incorporating that high protein meal into existing products so it could become a high protein waffle or pancake or a cookie or pasta for instance, and so then you can get the benefit of that full serving of protein without having to chew on a thousand little mealworms. Most of the problems that are going to be faced by large-scale insect farming have already been solved in other industries. A lot of this is developing, particularly in the West, as sort of a grassroots movement. And something that we're very excited about at Tiny Farms and we're trying to help foster is the opportunity to see the sort of DIY, home scale, open science, open source uh, mentality applied to solving problems in the insect farming sector. And so with the internet, we're now able to connect with people that are interested in this all around the world. We have people contacting us from Colombia and Spain and Croatia daily, asking questions, wanting to get involved. And now there's a huge uh, brain resource available to turn towards these problems. And instead of a historical situation where you'd have a group in Croatia solving the problem and a group in South America solving the problem, we're able to do that additively. We can coordinate effort in a way that was never historically possible. And so we think the potential to grow the industry is unlike anything that's ever been seen before.